In the Stackelberg game, we assume that Firm 1 gets to decide how much to produce first, then Firm 2 observes what Firm 1 did, and sets his own output level. And we showed that if demand curves are linear, and the firms face constant marginal costs, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outcome is, for the first firm, the Stackelberg leader, to produce the monopoly quantity, and for the second firm, the Stackelberg follower, to produce half the monopoly quantity. We're not going to change the game a little bit by assuming that at the beginning of the game, firm 2 isn't even part of this market. And in order to become part of this market, it has to set up shop. It has to pay a fixed cost, which we'll call a fixed entry cost. Once it's done that, that fixed entry cost becomes a sunk cost and is not relevant for anything further the firm is going to do in this market. But at the beginning of the game, it's an economic cost to worry about because firm 2 is going to have to decide is it worth paying that fixed entry cost to be able to operate in this market or not. So we want to change the game so that firm 2 doesn't immediately choose how much to produce after observing firm 1. Instead, it's going to decide whether to enter or not enter. And only if it's decided to enter and to pay that fixed entry cost does it have to decide how much to produce. Now if firm 2 decides not to enter, its profit is just going to be equal to zero. But firm 1's profit is going to depend on how much it produced in the first stage. If it produced the monopoly quantity and firm 2 did not enter and add any to that output, then the price will be the monopoly price and the firm will make the monopoly profit. But it may be that firm 1 decides to produce more in the first stage in order to drive down price so that it becomes unprofitable for firm 2 to pay that fixed entry cost and enter the market. That's what we call deterring entry. And under certain circumstances, it may be in firm 1's strategic interest to do that. Now, if Firm 2 does enter, then Firm 1 has strategically chosen to allow that to happen, to not deter entry. And so Firm 1 has accepted the fact that it will engage in quantity competition with Firm 2 exactly as it would if it was simply playing the Stackelberg game. And similarly, Firm 2, by the time it reaches this point, is simply responding to the quantity set by Firm 1 exactly as it would in the Stackelberg game. So the outcome, if we enter, if firm 2 enters and we're on the left branch of this game tree, would be that the profit for firm 1 is equal to the Stackelberg leader profit, and the profit for firm 2 is equal to the Stackelberg follower profit minus the fixed entry cost that the firm paid along the way. That is a cost the firm has to worry about at the beginning of the game when it's thinking about its strategy. So now we can think about what role these fixed entry costs play in fostering strategic thinking aimed at entry deterrence by firm one. Now that's, that fixed entry cost may take on many different values. It may be really low, it may be really high. So we're going to think of different values of that fixed entry cost and think about how much the firms are going to produce in different environments with different fixed entry costs. And we'll start on the right of this. At some point, that fixed entry cost is going to be so high that even if firm 1 simply produces the monopoly quantity, firm 2 will choose not to enter. They're simply too high a fixed entry cost. In that case, Firm 1 might as well just produce the monopoly quantity. It doesn't have to deter entry. The fixed entry cost is high enough to do it all by itself. And Firm 1 can happily be a monopolist, can simply produce the monopoly quantity, knowing that Firm 2 is not going to enter 
and that firm two will produce nothing. That's simply the case of a monopoly, a monopoly that's protected by barriers to entry high enough for the monopolist, the firm in the market, not to have to worry about any other firms. It's when that fixed entry cost falls below this level that things become interesting. Because now firm one has to decide, am I going to raise my output level in order to keep firm two out to make sure that that fixed entry cost is too high for it to make a profit and end up with the profit that that gives me? Or am I instead going to allow firm two to enter and satisfy myself by just getting that Stackelberg leader profit? We know that the firm can always just get the Stackelberg leader profit by letting firm two enter. So we know the profit it's going to get here will never be below this. It's never going to produce a quantity that's going to get it a profit that's less than the Stackelberg leader profit if it ends up being the only one to remain in the market because it knows it can always get that profit. So we can look at firm, two's, uh, firm one's profit by putting it on this axis and seeing how it changes with how much firm one produces assuming it's successful at deterring entry and we know that profits going to be the highest if the firm produces the monopoly quantity then it gets to make the monopoly profit if it produces less the profits going to fall if it produces more the profits going to fall so profit it's going to look something like this. Initially, as the firm produces more, profit rises. It peaks at the monopoly quantity, and then it falls again. And somewhere below that is the profit that the firm can guarantee itself by simply allowing the other firm to enter, the Stackelberg leader profit. It could also get that same level of profit by being the only firm in the market and producing this quantity but it'll never produce a higher quantity to deter entry because that would give us that would give it a profit below the Stackelberg leader profit which it knows he can get by just letting the other firm enter so this puts an upper bound on how much firm one is willing to produce in order to deter entry it's going to be willing to produce quantities up to that level to ensure that it's the only one in the market but once it has to produce more than that to deter entry, it's going to simply choose to let the other firm enter. So there'll be some fixed entry cost at which the firm is going to switch from deterring entry to just allowing entry to happen. As the fixed entry for cost falls below this level where the monopoly simply doesn't have to do anything, the firm's going to increase its output to deter entry. Initially it's only going to have to increase it by a little bit and lower its profit by a little bit from the monopoly profit to be the only one in the market because that fixed entry cost is still very high. But as it falls it's going to have to produce more and more. But it's never going to produce more than this quantity where even if it succeeds it's only going to make the Stackelberg leader profit by itself. Once it hits that quantity and the fixed entry cost falls even further, it's simply going to give up. It's simply going to say the fixed entry cost is now sufficiently low that deterring entry means I have to produce more than that, which means making less profit than I can by being the Stackelberg leader. And so from then on, it's simply going to produce as the Stackelberg, Stackelberg leader, the monopoly quantity, firm two is going to produce the Stackelberg follower quantity, half the monopoly quantity, and they'll simply be playing the Stackelberg game. In this range here, we have entry deterrence. Where firm two ends up not entering and therefore produces nothing but firm one has to try increasingly hard to keep the other firm out produce more and more 
in order to end up in this branch of the game tree.